All right. Hey guys, how you doing? This is the second video of lesson six, and we are starting with a word problem. And it says Blake and three friends share one third pound of frozen yogurt equally. How many pounds does each person get? Okay. So think about a tape diagram that you could draw for this problem and write it down. Pause me so you can come back and see what I have to say about it. Okay, very good. And here's a tape diagram. Does this match the problem? Does it make sense to do with the problem? No, it doesn't. You're right. Good job. Uh, why do you think the student labeled it four? Why did they put four here? Is there a four in the problem? Well, yes, there's Blake and his three friends. So that might be the four. And then maybe they were thinking of the one third pound. But what is the problem there? The friends are not the ones being shared, right? It's the one third pound that's being shared. So you have to be careful when you're making your tape diagram. When we represent a division story, we need to think about which number represents the dividend and which one represents the divisor. And those are some vocabulary words that are going to be kind of important in this lesson. So let's just look at this really quickly. Dividend is the number that's being divided. I don't know. I kind of think of it as like the big block of marble, the dividend. It's being split up. And then the divisor is the one that's doing the action. You see the O-R at the end of that um, word. It's like... Um, Runner does the running, um, advisor does the advising. So when you have the OR or ER at the end, it's the thing that's doing the action. So the divisor is doing the dividing. Does that make sense? Okay. And then, of course, the answer is the quotient. I like to just think of it as that weird Q word at the end of a div division problem right? We got some V's and Q's in there. So we end with a Q word. I don't know if that helps you. And then for regular division, not fraction division, you see the dividend is the big block that's being divided up. The divisor is doing the action and the quotient is the answer. Okay. Just a quick review of those words. And it's always a good habit to read the problem more than once and think about that tape diagram and how it's going to represent your story before you get started. Okay, so now let's see what tape diagram would really help here would be more something like this. Okay, sorry, my sound went out again. So if you're looking at one, one third pounds, you're gonna divide that among four people that would make more sense, right? So the question mark would be how many each person got. One third divided by four people. Four people, don't forget, Blake and three friends. So you want to include all of those in your tape diagram and your problem. All right. Cover that one up so that we're not thinking about that one at all. And we're just thinking about one third divided by four without th finding the actual quotient. Is the quotient greater than one third or less than one third? What do you think about that? Without doing the math, I know that's a challenge. So if I'm taking one third and I'm breaking it up with four people, then each person's gonna get less than a third, right? Okay, that's how you know it's going to be, the quotient is going to be less. All right, and we're going to look at number one in your book now. How many half pound servings of shrimp can Miss Song make with six pounds of shrimp? So look at these two expressions. Which one do you think is correct to go with this problem? Six divided by one half or one half divided by six? Maybe she's having a Super Bowl party. 
and she wants to give each person one half pounds of shrimp, but she only has six pounds. So what does the six represent and what does the one half represent? So can you draw a tape diagram to go with it? You can pause me and come back and see what we do. Okay, so we're gonna make a tape diagram of six pounds. Remember LB is the abbreviation for pounds. We have six pounds of shrimp and we're gonna break them into half pound servings. Now in a traditional tape diagram, you would just put the dot dots and the how many pounds does this show? How many half pound servings do we have? But we could also use our tape diagram however we want. So if we want to show each pound and the halves that we're breaking it into, we can do that so that we can see exactly how many half pound servings we have using a red pen to mark each of our pounds and then breaking them into sections of half pound each. You can see how many half pounds you have there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Two times six because we're breaking each pound in half. So we have six pounds. So two times six is twelve. Start with a whole number and with a whole number, right? So six pounds. How many halves are in? six pounds. And we know that our quotient is going to be greater than six because we're breaking each of them in half. So that would give us 12. If we had one half divided by six, that would give us one twelfth. That wouldn't make any sense, right? It would be very small, taking one half and breaking it into six parts. Okay, understanding the answers is very important. Let's look at number two, eight divided by one third. Do you think the quotient is going to be greater than eight or less than eight? And remember, very important that we don't do the math. We just try to think about it. Right, we're just trying to think about it and not actually doing the math here. Eight broken into thirds, right? So how many thirds are in eight? Is that gonna be greater than eight or less than eight? The value of the number, not the size or anything like that. We're just thinking about the value. And then we have some sentence stems here that we're also going to use to think about these answers as well. And yes, it would be greater than eight. And if you're like me and you have to do the math, you might be thinking about eight times three is 24. Start with a whole number and with a whole number. So how many thirds are in eight? There would be 24. Please excuse my arms. Sorry about that. Okay, and we're going to look at our sentence stems. When dividing blank by a unit fraction, what's a unit fraction? It's a fraction that has a one on top, right? So it could be like one-fifth, one-third, one-eighth. Any fraction that has a one on top is a unit fraction. So when dividing blank by a unit fraction, the quotient is blank, the dividend, because, hmm, Think about what goes in those blanks. Once again, kind of thinking about how we evaluate and how we know what we're going to use for our word problems when we're dividing fractions.
So when I'm dividing 8 by a unit fraction, the quotient is greater than the dividend because it takes 3 thirds to make a whole. And when I'm dividing a unit fraction by a whole number, the quotient is less than the dividend because the dividend is being divided into smaller parts. All right, yeah, we should probably write that down and make it easier for you to understand. When I'm dividing a unit fraction by a whole number, so that would be like one third divided by eight, the quotient is less than the dividend because the dividend is being broken into smaller parts, right? So like one third divided by eight would be one twenty fourth. Start with a fraction, end with a fraction. That's kind of what they're saying here in these sentence stems. or one-third divided by four would be one-twelfth. Taking that one-third and breaking it into four parts. One-twelfth of the whole amount, right? Okay, and let's add the words up here just so you can see them and leave it easier. When dividing eight by a unit fraction, the quotient is greater than the dividend because it takes more than one unit fraction to make a whole. So even if I had one, how many halves are in one, it would still be two, which is greater than one. I know, take some thinking about those, right? Okay, let's look at one half divided by four versus one fourth divided by four. Without doing the math, which one is going to be larger, greater than, equal to, or less than, right? That's what we're doing is trying to compare without doing the math. So I have one half of a donut, and I'm breaking it into four parts. Or I have one-fourth of a donut, and I'm breaking it into four parts. You can see that our divisors are the same, but our dividends, what's being divided, is different. So that's what our main difference is here. Without doing the math, think about that. Maybe a half of a pizza broken into four parts or a fourth of a pizza broken into four parts. Which value is larger? Which number is larger? <coughs> Sorry about my dogs. I've got three of them with me right now. And for some reason, they're arguing with each other. Sorry about that. Okay, so what do you think? Which one do you think is going to be larger? One half broken into four parts. It's going to have a higher value. Start with a fraction, end with a fraction. One half times divided by four is one eighth. One fourth divided by four is one sixteenth. See the difference? It's one sixteenth of a pizza is smaller than one eighth of a pizza. Now, three divided by one third versus one third divided by three. Huh. Okay, our dividends are different and our divisors are different. Of course, they're related, right? If I have three donuts and I break them into thirds versus I have one third of a donut and I break it into thirds, I break it into three parts. So how many thirds are in three versus one third breaking into three parts, right? Do you see the difference there? So there are nine thirds in three and one third broken into three parts is one ninth. Quite a difference. So you can see that nine is bigger than one ninth. All right, very good. We just have one more, two more questions to go, one more part. So five divided by one fourth versus five divided by one third, right? Our dividends are the same, our divisors are different. And we're asking how many fourths are in five versus how many thirds are in five. Which number would be higher? 
I know it's hard for me not to do the math because I'm not very good at reasoning. Maybe you are good at reasoning. We're definitely trying to build our reasoning through Eureka math, right? And five divided by one fourth is bigger because there are 20 pieces where five divided by one third is smaller because there's only 15 pieces, right? I know it is okay sometimes to do the math. It's not like there's a law against it, right? Sometimes we just need that assurance that we know for sure and why we know for sure. I'm totally fine with that. One ninth times three versus one ninth divided by three. Now here we have two different operations, right? Sorry about my arms there. So one ninth times three means one ninth of three, right? So let's say I'm going to give you one ninth of my three dollars or one ninth of my three donuts. Whereas one ninth divided by three means I have like a ninth of my donut and I'm breaking it into three pieces, right? You see the difference there? So hmm, now which one is going to be bigger is the question. Think about that for a minute. Almost have to do the math, I think, because one ninth times three, right, would be three ninths, and one ninth divided by three would be one twenty seventh. Hmm. Now, which one is bigger? We have to have common denominators when we're comparing or adding or subtracting fractions. So we're going to need to change our 3 ninths to 20 sevenths so that we have a level playing field for um, comparing these two, right? Multiply by 3 times 3, that gives us 9 20 sevenths. We can clearly see that 9 20 sevenths is bigger than 1 20 sevenths. So I was suspecting that one ninth of three was going to be larger than nine twenty sevenths. How about you? Were you thinking about that? It's basically, do you have, even if you do the math, can you explain it? Can you, do you have a good concept of what these different operations mean? What it means when there's a fraction in the divisor, what it means when there's a whole number in the divisor. Aloha. Thank you for paying attention. You're awesome.